Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bass.com and in this video we're going to do the full in-depth review for this LG G Pro Lite which is a mid-range Android phone by LG. So this is the LG G Pro Lite with me and I've already done the unboxing for this phone and also I've done the gaming review for this phone. All the links will be in the show notes and this LG G Pro is a large screen size mid-range Android phone by LG and for the price it offers a lot of features and uh, before we proceed uh, let me talk about the pricing also as you can see on the box the price quoted is 22,990 but Faisal Communications quoted me a street price of 19,500 for this phone and I want to thank them for providing this unit for review and as you can see uh, it sports a huge screen that's a 5.5 inch screen and to give you an idea this is uh, my Galaxy Note 3 and as you can see the Note 3 has a slightly larger screen that's a 5.7 inch screen uh, but no, do note that in the terms of dimensions and also the height it's very similar uh, to the Note 3 so it's a big phone and the screen is a IPS grade screen the resolution is uh, QHD that is 540 by 960 it's not a full HD screen uh, and uh, before uh, I proceed let me give you a physical overview on the top we have the 3.5 mm headphone jack this is the IR blaster using which we can control devices like televisions we have a built-in app in the phone i'll show you that a bit later and this is the secondary microphone and we have this uh, steel chrome finish and if you notice this closely this is a stylus that is there on this phone it's not uh, uh, it does not have many functions it's just a dumb stylus does not have any pens or etc but you can use this to navigate with the phone and we also have this uh, 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 what do you say this quick memo app using which we can just write it you don't need to use the stylus you can just use the, your hand also and write it but that is there and this stylus neatly can be tucked in away like this as you can see moving towards this side we have the power on off button we have an indent over here to open the back cover i'll show you that a bit later and on the bottom we have dual uh, uh, slots for the speaker one is over here one is over here and this is the main microphone micro usb slot that will be used for charging and syncing this phone and on this end we have the volume rocker over here and this is the uh, button for a default it's set to quick apps but you can also set it to any other apps so by just hitting this button you can open any app moving towards the back we have an 8 megapixel camera with led flash and this uh, rear facing ca uh, camera can record video up to 720p hd we have the lg branding nothing else uh, and the back is actually very glossy plastic and it's kind of slippery i would say and uh, moving towards the front we have a, a front facing camera and I tested this with Skype video calls and I had no problems and we have the LG branding and a nice earpiece the call quality that I got was pretty decent with this phone and we have that a huge 5.5 inch screen and on the bottom we have the touch type capacitive buttons uh, that is the back home this is for menu and this is for changing between sim 1 and sim 2 one thing i don't like is that these back buttons are not eliminated uh, so uh, at night uh, if you don't know where they are it might be a bit difficult and also this phone does not have any uh, led notification light so if you get a missed call etc nothing glows so that's one con i have with this uh, device uh, this device also has the LG knock-on feature that we saw first with the LG G2. Uh, for example, the phone is right now open, but I just if I double tap, it'll go to standby. And uh, technically speaking, if you just double tap here, it should also wake up. But I found that this is a little bit patchy. It does not wake up exactly. Uh, it takes one or two tries for opening the phone, but for closing, it works beautifully. Just double tap. And you also have this regular power on off button using which you can control it. Uh, regarding the UI, it runs the custom uh, uh, LG UI and we do get up to seven home screens with this one like this. And let me also show you the Android version, etc. And as you can see, we also have the quick toggles over here. We have a lot of toggles like this uh, and we can also edit them. We also have these apps. These are QSlide apps. I'll uh, talk about them a bit later and uh, let's go to the settings let's go to about the phone and if you go to the common and software info as you can see it runs the Android version 4.1.2 that is Jelly Bean and uh, regarding the storage the internal storage is 8 GB but out of that uh, out of the box you just get about 4.1 GB I've installed a lot of apps 
hence I have just 1.76 GB available. You can also add a micro SD card up to 32 GB. I added a 16 GB SD card as you can see. Uh, but the thing is that uh, there is no functionality of moving the apps uh, or installing them directly on the SD card. So the SD card can be used, just used for a uh, camera and storing for, for example videos, music, etc. For apps, you need to use this internal storage. Now let me move back. And one more thing is that uh, this phone does not have any auto brightness sensor. So you need to manually adjust the brightness uh, that can be directly accessed from here. So that's one thing that I wanted to make clear. Uh, also, we do have one hand operations where uh, the dial pad and the keyboard etc becomes a little bit small, but it's not very extensive. This is the quick button I was talking about and by default it's set to quick memo, but you can change it to other apps if you would like. So that's also there. And this is the app tray. And if you just select this default, this is the default view that shows us all the apps that are available on the phone. But if you just click here, it will show you the apps that you have downloaded. And from here also you can access the widgets. Now coming to the specs of this phone and I'll use the CPU Z applications. As you can see, it runs a one gigahertz dual core processor based on the ARM Cortex A9 architecture. And the GPU on this is a PowerVR SGX 531. Again, um, this processor is made by MediaTek but not, uh, and not by Qualcomm or Exynos, something like that. So it's a, uh, what do you say, budget oriented uh, uh, processor and uh, it, it's based on the MT6577 uh, board. That is a MediaTek chipset. The RAM on this is 1 gigs. Uh, so again, uh, this GPU is also not very powerful. So in terms of the CPU and GPU, I would say uh, LG could have done a better job. Uh, it's just a 1 gigahertz dual core processor. Uh, though it handles the phone, uh, I would say uh, beautifully for most of the part, I would say. But sometimes I did notice lags here and there while doing some heavy multitasking. Now, let me also uh, show you the uh, back cover. You can easily open it. We have an indent here. And this opens and there's nothing but standard plastic and we have the huge battery that's a 3140 milliampere battery and you can just remove this battery and I added a, mi a micro SD card up to 16 GB up to 32 GB is supported and you can also add your two sims over here uh, and, and regarding the battery life I tested this with just a single sim and I would say the battery life that I got on this uh, LG G Pro Lite was excellent. Regarding the build, I have no problems. Uh, the phone uh, has a good feel. Uh, if you're used to large screen phones, it will be comfortable. But again, by no stretch, it's a small phone. And as you can see, you can't reach all uh, parts of the screen with a single hand. You need to stretch a little bit. But if you're used to big phones, you shouldn't have a problem. And there is no creaking noise or anything with the phone. So the build quality is pretty good on this phone. Now coming to the screen quality, it's an IPS great screen. And if you notice, uh, the screen quality is actually pretty good. The viewing angles are also uh, pretty good. Is, I would say uh, adequately loud, but again, do note that you do, it does not have any auto brightness sensor. Now, let me just open up this web browser and it's going to our website that's techtobuzz.com. And as you can see, for the most part, it loads the websites without any issues. But when you pinch or zoom, it takes half a second or so to render it back. It's not instantaneous, but I would say more than sufficient. And uh, again, as I told you, the screen quality is good. So text looks pretty sharp. And let me just open one of the stories. Uh, we have a YouTube video in this and let's see how it handles it. And this is a YouTube video. So let's try to play it back. So as you can see, it could handle it without any issues. And also it, as it has dual speakers, the sound output was also pretty decent in my opinion. So regarding web browsing, you won't have a problem with this LG G Pro Lite. So let me get out of that and let me open the browser again and let me show you these quick uh, QSlide apps. These can reside over existing apps. For example, as you can see, for example, if you have some web page, you can do your calculation and also you can adjust the transparency of these apps. So that functionality is also there. Now let me also talk about media playback. And first let me show you the YouTube app. 
and let's uh, just go to my own channel and let's uh, open up this LGG Pro overview video itself. Uh, do note that. Hi there, this is Ranji, uh, Let me lower the volume. First look at this LG G Pro light, which is the uh, one thing I notice is that it cannot play videos in uh, HD but in high quality. And I would say it handles it without any issues. For example, as you can see, for YouTube, I did not have any problems with this one, and it could play YouTube videos without any issues. So let me get out of this one now. And regarding other videos, uh, this is the built-in video uh, player app that we have on this uh, device. And uh, the thing is that the it couldn't play a lot of video formats. Uh, I needed to use a third-party video player. I'll show you that. And uh, one thing we have is you can pop out the video player with this app for example as you can see you can do that you can resize this and we can also adjust the transparency of the video so this functionality is provided by the default video player app but again it couldn't play a lot of video formats so i uh, downloaded this mx player it's free you can download this and using this i could also play back videos up to 1080p uh, this is a 1080p video but i would say for the smoothest playback restrict the videos up to 720p this is a 1080p video and it could play it back but it's not the smoothest playback uh, i would say it was dropping a few frames so if you restrict the video is up to 720p uh, you won't have a problem with this device and if you hold this home button for a while you get this multitasking tray and as you can see we are running quite a, a bit of apps and then also the phone is uh, uh, pretty responsive. So I would say it handles multitasking also fine, but sometimes uh, with when you're running very heavy games or etc., it's a good idea to clear. And fortunately we have this button of clear all, which clears all the apps. Uh, I also tested the Google now as it runs Jelly Bean and it runs fine. For example, who's the president of United States? So as you can see that also works fine and uh, now coming to gaming performance and benchmarks i also tested this uh, phone with a lot of games and benchmarks and i would say it can handle uh, casual to mid-range games without any issues for example subway surfer dead trigger even dead trigger 2 which is a new game uh, it could handle it without any issues um, but in some of the heavy games for example asphalt 8 and real racing 3 uh, it could play them fine. I was surprised that it could play Asphalt 8, uh, but uh, it was skipping some frames. I've already made a dedicated video regarding the gaming performance with this LG G Pro Lite. So if you're interested in the gaming and benchmarks, you can check out that video. Now, uh, let's look at the camera also. The rear facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter uh, with LED flash. And this is the camera app. And let me show you uh, the quick interface. By default, this is the interface that you get and you can toggle between the photo and the video mode like this. We are back into the photo mode and let me show you the modes first. Uh, these are the modes that are offered but if you want more info, you can just click here and here it gives you a lot more info about the modes, what they do. Let me just go back and let me also show you some of the settings. And these are the settings that are offered. We have the voice commands also and uh, we can also uh, uh, it's just the shutter sound and we can also shut it off if you would like so again a lot of uh, options are there and we can also set the storage from here to the internal storage or to the sd card regarding the image uh, resolution the max is 8 megapixel but if you want to go to wide you have to go down to 6 megapixel and i'll show you some of the pictures that i shot on this uh, uh, wide screen mode that is 6 megapixel later on you can go down to 5 and 1 and let's take some shots now we do have this uh, tap to focus functionality but one thing is that it takes almost two seconds to focus once it's done focusing then uh, it takes the snaps pretty quickly but by that time it takes a lot of time and let's look at the shots and as you can see uh, this was in completely artificial light and in artificial light i noticed that uh, uh, it uh, uh, the pictures come out to be okay sometimes but a lot of time there is a lot of noise in the pictures for example as you can see this came out okayish but there is a little bit of noise now regarding the video mode you can just switch here go to the video mode and from here you can adjust the settings 
and the maximum resolution is 720p HD not 1080p but 720p HD and uh, I would say in the video department it does an okay job biggest con is that we don't have any image stabilization not even video based uh, what do you say software based image stabilization so the video that I shot was a little bit shaky so yes I would say it does an okay job uh, in terms of photos outdoors indoors uh, there is a little bit of noise but in video uh, I would say the videos are a little bit shaky to my liking. Regarding the front facing camera as I told you I tested it with Skype video calls and the quality was decent. And let me also show you the default messaging app. This is the default messaging app and this is the default keyboard. The good thing is that we have a dedicated row for the numbers and we also do get this predictive text that makes typing very easy. We can also change the orientation and the keyboard works. And uh, before I end this review, let me also show you one more thing that is this quick remote. We have this quick remote functionality using which we can control a couple of devices. For example, um, in the G, uh, what do you say, LG G2, uh, we had a lot more options like what do you say, air condition, etc. But on this one, it's restricted to only these three. For example, you can select the TV, and these are the brands of TV. For example, if you have a Samsung television, it works. You just select it and you just test it and it works. I tested it and it works fine. But uh, one thing I noticed is that the selection of devices is a bit limited on this device. So what do I feel about this LG G Pro Lite? I would say it's a decent handset and I would say this is a handset for people who are primarily looking for a large screen size phone on a mid range budget. And for that, it does a decent job. It sports a 5.5 inch screen. And as you can see, it's IPS great screen. Uh, so the quality is decent. And even outdoors, if you set the brightness to full, it's, I would say, fairly legible. Uh, so in terms of the screen quality, LG has done a good job. And also in the day to day performance, I would say the performance was OK. Uh, and uh, for the most part, the phone was very responsive. Yes, I did notice a, a lag here and there, but uh, it was not like the lag was uh, uh, always there. I noticed it I would say uh, around 3 or 4 percent of the time. So overall it's a pretty uh, responsive phone and also it can do some gaming uh, for example as we have seen uh, it could play casual games and even uh, some of the mid-range games without any issues. Coming to the heavy games as expected uh, uh, there was a little bit of droppage of frames. Uh, so I would say it's a decent Android phone uh, for a budget uh, but now coming to some of the cons that I faced with this phone as, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the back home and these uh, bottom touch type capacitor button are simply not backlit. So at night, if you're not used to it, it's a little bit difficult. It does, uh, you, you generally do get used to it within two, three days, but I found it to be a little bit annoying. Also, we do not have any front facing LED notification light. Now coming to the camera, though it's an eight megapixel shooter with LED flash, I would say outdoors, it does a decent job, nothing great. Uh, I would say decent but indoors there was a little bit of uh, noise in many of the pictures that I shot and coming to the videos it can uh, record videos only up to 720p HD and also the video quality was not that great because this phone does not have any sort of image stabilization not even software base. So in terms of camera it was just okay-ish uh, so these are some of the minor cons but apart from that I would say it's a decent phone and you also get the additional functionality for example we do get the IR blaster. Uh, with this one though the functionality is not uh, full-fledged but yes you can control a lot of televisions etc with that and uh, for the most part as I told you the phone is pretty responsive so I would say this phone is okay for people who are looking for a large screen size phone and who are casual to mid-range users if you are a heavy user uh, high-end user then you might not like this phone because sometimes it's a little bit laggy and uh, in India, currently this phone is being sold at a street price of around 19,500. It's just launched uh, and we know that generally these phones within a couple of months, the price generally falls down. So I'm expecting that uh, within a couple of months, the price for this LG G Pro Lite should also fall down to around 17,500 to 18,000 or so. And at that price point, uh, if you're looking for a large screen size phone, I would say that this LG G Pro Lite uh, is a decent phone. Also the big uh, uh, plus point with this phone is the battery life. The battery life that I got on this phone was excellent.
So I hope that you found this uh, video review helpful. If you found it helpful, I'll appreciate if you can click the thumbs up or the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to the same. That is youtube.com slash geeky Ranjit. That is G-W-E-K-Y-R-A-N-J-I-T. Thank you. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video.